Waste Beats 101. I am a natural hair story. Uh, I make story beads, which is Waste Beats to tell your story. You can custom make them. You can purchase from me on Etsy. DM me on IG. I got, I'm on Amazon. Let me know. But this video is not about necessarily me. This is about Waste Beads in general. And the things that I wish a motherfucker would have told me when I first started wearing Waste Beads. So, Waste Beads 101. I found a lot of videos that talk about the origin and the history, but not really about what to do after you place your order. After you place your order and you get your waist beads or you go grab them, these are the things that you should learn, you should leave with an instruction sheet, or you should know. When people purchase waist beads for me, the first thing, one of the first most important questions I asked is, are you a waist bead wearer? Which means, do you wear waist beads a lot, or is this your first set? If this is your first set, like a lot of us in the western si western side of the world, this gonna be your first set. You gonna get them around about your twenties, uh, all the way up to your thirties. Some people first set is in their forties, which means that all those pictures that you saw of them beautiful African goddesses with waist beads on, and you think that's gonna be you, that's expert level you are at the beginning level which means that you probably should purchase your waist beads and they should fall around the middle of your stomach or around your belly button this is the base the best place for weight gauge that way you know if you eat too much they get tight if you are doing the right thing with your diet they drop because you're losing weight and you're losing inches in your waist but the reason why you need to get them right there is because in order for you to successfully wear waist beads, you have to not pop them. If you continuously pop in your waist beads, you think it's because your waist beads is not made right or it's not for you. That's not true. The waist beads have to eventually turn into another, a second skin, a part of your body. That's expert level. Until you get there, you have to start at beginner level. Beginner level is the safe zone. Not only does it help with weight gauge, but it keeps you away from huge waist bead obstacles, which is going to be your panties, using the bathroom, your zipper, the, the button on your jeans, running to the bathroom real fast and forgetting you're wearing waist beads, pop, pop, pop. Most waist beads die in the bathroom. Just completely honest. So when you get your waist beads, you want to try to start higher because you're not used to being mindful of your wound american society we don't even take enough time to speak to our wound get to know our root chakra we don't wear waist beads at all historically waist beads are given to little girls as a rites of passage and or they're born and had waist beads since birth that means these girls are experts way before they even teenagers we are learning if you get your waist beads lower these are the obstacles that you have to face most of us don't make it past that you want to be mindful of your zipper you want to be mindful of your buttons you want to be mindful of your underwears these are the things if you get them what i say is expert level which is hips panty line is expert level not saying you shouldn't get it but you will have more success if you work your way down if you work your way down in the waist speed arena, I guess you want to say. So, that's number one, is placement. Placement is very important for success. If you want to be a successful waist beat wearer and don't give up. Just like riding a bike, it takes consistency. If you break your waist beads and you love waist beads, you love the culture, you love how sexy they make you feel, you love the energy that they give off to your partner, you love everything. They build your self-esteem if they pop. Fuck that. Keep going. Keep wearing your waist beads. Get another set. Keep going. Consistency is the key with anything in life. All right, so after we talked about the levels, if you're just starting, you need to be at beginner level. If you're an expert, you can move down towards your panty line. Second is comfort. Comfort and fashion. Some of the stuff that you see online and you say, I really want these waist beads, they are super dope but they are not comfortable to sleep in. Most people wear waist beads around the clock. Some people cannot wear waist beads around the clock, so they take them off when they sleep in. If you have just a string of beads, it's going to be a lot more comfortable to sleep in that than if you were to buy the fashion waist beads or the crystal waist beads, and you cannot take them off. In my opinion, clasps are very important until you make it to the expert level. So, if you're getting something fashionable with a lot of crystals, a lot of charms, and historically, 
I think it is in Nigeria, around that area, charms are said to hold um, positive energy in, ward negative energy out, and it also protects the babies that are in the mother's womb, protects your womb area. Perfect, but you may not feel comfortable sleeping in them. And if you are uncomfortable, that is a deterrent. You want to be successful in this waist speed journey, so you want to make sure that you're able to take them off if you get fashion waist beads. I suggest beginners start with just the beads, maybe one charm. Make sure you have it in the beginner area. Crystal healing. Every property that you get, for every, every crystal has properties and energy that it vibrates into you, into your energy field. What you're supposed to do when you get your crystals is you're supposed to sage your crystals and you're supposed to program your crystals. According to Sacred Woman by Queen of Four, you are supposed to take time to get to know yourself and your womb. Talk to your womb, figure out if you know she feels comfortable with certain stones and certain energies. You should be saging these crystals before you put them in that sacred area. Trust me. Then you are supposed to be programming. An actual programming of these bees would mean that you saged your home, you saged your body, you've taken a spiritual bath, you've sat somewhere where it's quiet and you can meditate and you can put nothing but intention into these bees. What you want these bees to do for you, what you expect out of these beads, where you want these bees to take you, speak with your womb. She says, rub your hands together, create warmth, put your hands upon your womb, talk to her, get to know her. In Western society, we need to do it more. Okay, so after you've saged your beads, programmed your beads, we're going to roll right into bead care um, and, and, and things of that nature. Okay, there's certain things you should never put on your beads. Never put salt water. Even though you see all these amazing pictures of these women walking into the beach walk, and, and having all these waist beads on and posing in the sand, baby. Don't put them fucking waste beads in that salt water. Salt water is one of the strongest things in the world. It can change regular wood into driftwood. If you go into the ocean and you got an open cut, that should have closed your cut. Imagine what it will do to any cordage and or beads and or crystals. Do not take them into the salt water. I would suggest maybe not even swimming in the pool with them. It's a lot of chemicals in there too. It will jeopardize the integrity of the cordage of your beads. Some of the actual beads it'll mess up too. Don't swim in your waist beads unless you are in your shower or your bath. Period. Secondly, heavy perfumes is a no-no. Heavy lotions is a no-no. Put the lotion on your body. Do not put it on them fucking beads. Period. Shower gels. It is a no-no. Therefore, if you're able to take your beads off when you wash your body, take your beads off, wash your body, put them back on. It's certain earrings we wouldn't go into the, to the um, shower with. It's certain rings, certain jewelry. Respect your waist beads. Hashtag respect your waist beads. We talk about this on my channel. Find me on Instagram and I go into a little bit more. All right, so we talked about the beads. We talked about the cords. talked about the crystal. Let's roll right into sleep. Sleeping also possesses its own challenges. If you do have removable waist beads and you do not feel comfortable sleeping in your waist beads, sis, you good with the ancestors if you take them bitches off when you sleeping? For some of the best, best, best scholars, conscious folks say that you can fix any fucking thing in your body with sleep, water, chlorophyll, which is green leafy vegetables, meditation and music you you can fix anything oh and fasting you can fast and fix anything in your body too with that being said sleep is very crucial for recharging the melanin and getting yourself together do not if anything that fuck with your sleep is no good if the beads fuck with your sleep take them off because Eventually, you will associate the beads with discomfort and you will no longer want to wear them, which stops your successful waist bead journey. Do not sleep in the waist beads if they are uncomfortable. Me, I sleep in mine all the time. I'm expert level. I make them. I love them. Take them off if you got to sleep. Last but not least, your period. Your period. On average, the typical woman, this is eating a regular diet, meat, dairy, which should be a no-no. We'll get into it at another time. It, she gains between 5 to 10 pounds 
during her period. That's right before it's all water weight gain and the woman body going through woman body shit. If your waist beats become extremely uncomfortable during your menstruation, sis, you might got to tap out. You might got to take them fucking beads off. Because what you don't want to do is pop them and then you go, oh, these beads just bopped. And then you done with your beads. No, ma'am. We're going to be successful with these motherfuckers. You hear me? So, with that being said, if you start to bloat uncontrollably during your period and your beads become uncomfortable, take them off. Take them off. And when you come back down, because me personally, I gained 10 pounds. That's crazy. You want to be drinking water through your menstruation. If, you, if you're if having any problems, I, I recommend French thyme tea. Boil it, add some sugar, put a cinnamon stick, boom. But if you are gaining a lot of weight during your menstruation and your bees become uncomfortable, please take them off. Please don't pop them and get frustrated or mad with your waist bead maker or yourself or give up. Consistency is the key. This is the recipe for success when wearing waist beads. This is the shit I wish a motherfucker would have told me. If you need me, you can find me at a natural hair story and or story bees on Facebook and IG. I'm on Amazon. I'm on Google. Look for me. Shop with me. I love y'all. All my waist bead warriors love me. Once you go on this journey, you get me. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them. Waste bees 101 from a real one. Baltimore, let me know. Stand up. If you need any waist beads, let me know. Story Beads, a natural hair story. I love y'all. I'm going to keep doing this because this is for the culture.